Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going to introduce the concept of reaction forces uh, for 2D statics problems. So here we have a beam, this black beam, and it's fixed with a rigid connection to this wall. This wall is not going anywhere. It's totally fixed. Um, and then we're applying some forces here. So let's start off by drawing our, our free body diagram of the beam just considering the external blue forces here and not worrying about the reaction force yet because we actually haven't introduced that concept yet. Okay, so looking at this, we'll have, uh, we have 400 Newtons pressing up and then we're going to have some component here where we have um, BX and we also have BY. We should split this into its X and Y components and we should also probably draw in here that we have x positive x in that direction and positive y in that direction so i guess we can just fill this in so we have bx the x component of this fourth b would just be 500 times cos of 30 and if you punch that in your calculator you'll find that that is 433 newtons going that way and by uh, this would be 500 sine 30 and that would equal, in your calculator, if you punch that in, that's just 215 newtons. And that's oriented in the downward uh, directions, so the negative y direction. All right, so we can draw those on our free body diagram. So we would have 250 pointing down. And then off into the positive uh, x direction, we have 433 newtons pointing that direction. Okay, cool. Um, and then let's also label on our point C here, because that's going to come in handy. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna figure out just what is the total of our applied forces here. So looking at what we have so far, um, we have our sum of forces in the x direction according to our free body diagram. And again, we're ignoring the reaction forces right now, but we're just, we'll get to that in a second. So what we're looking at here with our applied forces, uh, we know that we're having a sum of x forces is 433 Newtons in that way, because that's the only force with an x component. Um, our sum of forces in the y direction uh, here of our applied forces that we have in the blue color would be 400 minus 250, right? Because up is the positive direction, so we'd actually end up getting 150 newtons in the upward direction. And then if we wanted to sum our moments about C, well, we can look at that. First, we should define uh, counterclockwise rotation as a positive moment. Um, and then we'll look at here, so we'll have the perpendicular distance times the line of, uh, perpendicular distance from the point to the line of action of each force, uh, it, it's perpendicular to that line. So here we'll get for the first component of this moment, uh, we actually have two meters times 400 newtons. And that would cause a positive moment because we're, this, if it was able to rotate about C, this would create this kind of counterclockwise rotation in this beam about point C. So that part would be a positive moment. And then you can see here, if we're just considering this 250 newtons downward, that would actually tend to want to create this object to spin clockwise around C, which would be a negative moment. So we have minus four, which is the distance, and 250, I guess we can put in units, four meters and 250 newtons. All right. so. Uh, this just simplifies out to 800 Newton meters minus 1,000 Newton meters. Um, and that is all equal to, well, 800 minus 1,000, so that's just negative 200 Newton meters. And that's also the same thing as saying 200 Newton meters um, in the clockwise sense. All right, so that's what... This is the sum of forces in X and Y and the sum of moments about C that just these blue applied forces are causing. So it might appear that this beam is not in static equilibrium, um, but we're ignoring so far the fact that it is uh, fixed to the wall here. So uh, the fixed connection, this fixed connection um, would actually, it actually applies forces and moments on the beam as well. So that's why it's looking like it's not in static equilibrium. Um, and fixed connections like this one, we're just saying it's totally fixed. It's not a hinge or something. It's just like bolted on or cemented on or something like that. Um, it can apply, apply a horizontal force, a vertical force, and a moment to resist all of the stuff that's going on here. 
So basically what that looks like, um, we can draw it on, I'll draw it on in pink just so we can see what the difference is. Actually, no, let's use green. Yeah. All right, so basically what it can do is it can apply, let's call it CX, um, a force in the X direction. It can apply a force in the Y direction, and it can also apply a moment that resists all of this stuff and keeps this from moving. So we could call that MC. Now what we should do is we should draw this on our free body diagram. Um, so we'll just keep it down here. So we have CX, uh, CY, and you can pick actually any direction when you're drawing these on. Um, and what happens here is if we figure out that we, uh, if we get a negative value for one of these when we check static equilibrium, then we'll just know that we've drawn the arrow in the wrong direction. And here we have uh, MC, moment C. Okay, so if we apply these reaction forces and moments, uh, we'll actually cancel out all of this stuff and then we'll show that this object is in static equilibrium if all of this is happening. Um, <clears throat> so, with the static, <laughs> by saying this is in static equilibrium, what we want to do is now we'll say, well, the sum of forces in the x direction must be zero to satisfy static equilibrium. Uh, and considering now that we have this reaction force here, uh, well, we have 433 newtons. Actually, you know, I'm going to color code this, I think, because that'll make it a little bit easier. So we have 433 newtons in the positive x direction, and we're saying this is plus cx because we've said, we're saying it's plus because we've just picked it going off in the, the positive x direction, um, and then this all has to be equal to zero. Um, <clears throat> what we can do is we can isolate here, so we have cx. If we just bring this 433 over to the other side, then we'll get this is equal to negative 433 newtons and this negative sign just means that we've drawn that we've just assumed this direction but we've assumed it wrong so this actually means that uh, we should actually probably be drawing that in green sure 433 newtons so that means that we've just uh, assumed this direction to be the wrong direction so basically what that's saying, that's CX, the reaction, the horizontal reaction force caused by this fixed connection is actually equal to 433 newtons in the left direction or the negative X direction. And if you look at that, that makes sense because this, all the blue applied forces were tending to create a whole um, sum of forces in the X direction that was 433 newtons to the right. Well, this reaction force is just canceling that out by applying 433 newtons to the left. Okay, so now for the sum of forces in the y direction, this has to be equal to zero. Um, so we'll get, basically we had here, we had 400 newtons pointing up from this guy. We had 250 newtons pointing down from this guy. And we're also saying that we're adding in uh, something called CY, this reaction force of CY, and that's going to give us a total of zero to satisfy static equilibrium. All right, well, what we can do is we can just isolate for CY, and we have 400 minus 150. Um, so that's, uh, that's 150, and we'll bring it to the other side, so that's negative 150. And again, that just means that when we see a negative sign, it just means we've drawn our arrow in the wrong direction. So that's the same thing as saying 150 newtons down. And that is actually perfect because that's canceling out the sum of all of the other applied forces that resulted in a total of 150 newtons pointing up. So by canceling that out, we're basically just saying that, yep, this thing is not going to have the tendency to translate in the, uh, in the X or Y direction. So now we can just consider the sum of moments for static equilibrium where the, well, the sum of moments has to be equal zero. And we are saying that this is fixed and nothing is moving, so it is in static equilibrium. Um, well, let's look at this. We remember from up here that this force was causing a 200, or two meter times 400 newton. It was 800 newton meters in the, uh, in the positive sense. And then we were subtracting 1,000 newton meters uh, in the negative sense caused by this force here. Uh, this force doesn't cause a moment because it passes right through the point that we're considering. 
Um, and then we're also saying here that based on the free body diagram now, including the reaction forces that we are subtracting because of the, the clockwise rotation here, it's opposite from what we've defined as positive. Um, we're subtracting this reaction moment, MC, and that should all equal out to zero. So uh, when we go here, we can just, well, basically we'll bring MC to the other side. So we have MC, and this is equal to 800 minus 1,000. Uh, that would be equal to negative 200 Newton meters. And when we look at this, we see that this actually is a little bit confusing in the way that I've drawn it because uh, we would think that um, a negative moment would be one that is going clockwise. Um, but it's actually, when we're looking at this uh, free body diagram, this negative sign actually indicates that we've just drawn this arrow, the backwards, so it's the opposite of how we've drawn it. Um, so this means actually, in this case, that this is 200 Newton meters uh, in the counterclockwise sense. And that actually makes sense because for this beam to be isolated and to be in static equilibrium, well, the, the blue forces here were causing a total moment of 200 newton meters in the clockwise sense, uh, and the reaction force here actually balances that, out, balances that out with a 200 newton meter moment in the counterclockwise sense. So there you go. That was a brief introduction and an example of a, a reaction support in a 2D statics problem. Um, I guess what I'll do while I still have your attention here, I will just draw the couple other common types of reaction forces that we can... Uh, that we can often experience in 2D statics problems. So here we have our fixed connection, uh, like the one that we had in this video that can provide a horizontal, a vertical reaction force, and a moment. Um, we have pinned here that can provide a horizontal and vertical reaction force. Imagine trying to pull on this. It's not going to be able to slide as long as the floor it's connected to the floor. And you're not going to be able to push and translate this object directly up. It, this pin will resist that motion. But if you did want to try and rotate it in that direction, nothing would happen. Or I mean, there, it, some, it would spin around there. There wouldn't be any uh, uh, resistance to you doing that. So pins can't actually provide uh, a reaction moment like that. Rollers, a little bit different here. Uh, rollers can provide uh, basically a normal force pointing up. There's actually nothing connecting it. Uh, so this would, this would resist you, but if you're pressing down, it's not going to be able to go through the floor. But actually, if you were to lift up, uh, depending if it's not sealed actually like this collar here, you just lift it right off the floor. So be careful with those ones. And if you were to pull, you know, in either direction, this, this whole mechanism would just slide across the floor, uh, right or left. So it's not able to resist a horizontal movement. Um, here we have smooth surface, basically, uh, like ice or just, we always use ice in these statics problems, but just any smooth surface, it is able to um, only provide Again, a normal force, so acting perpendicular to the wall, so in this case, or perpendicular to the surface. So it's able to uh, uh, provide resistance against that type of motion. If you were to lift it away from the wall, nothing would happen, but if you were to press it into the wall, um, as long as you're pressing straight down or straight into the wall, it would be fully resisted, but if you're pressing at some angle, then it would tend to want to slide along one of these surfaces. So it does not provide any resistance in that direction. And down here we have collars. So imagine this is just a collar fitted onto like a pipe or something. So if we were to pull this black object up, it would slide up. If we were to push it down, it would slide down. Um, it wouldn't be able to get pulled in either of those directions. You see the pipe would obviously be uh, constraining it in that way. So we say that it, it does. it is able to provide um, basically a reaction force in the x direction. And it is also able to apply a reaction moment. Because imagine if we were trying to turn this object like that. Well it would basically push into the pipe here and the pipe would push back a little bit on the top and the pipe would push that way a little bit on the bottom. And this would basically just create a force couple that cancels out the applied moment. So yeah, it is able to provide a, uh, a little bit of a reaction moment there. All right, there you go. That's just an introduction to some of the 2D uh, connections that we can be using. This definitely isn't all of them, but uh, this should make you familiar enough with the connection types for future videos.